I think we have gotten things totally ass backwards in this country. We do need to work. We do need to put our nose to the grindstone. We do need to be goal oriented and achieve. Success can be just getting out of bed in the morning for some people that are so depressed that life is so bad that just the mere fact that you crawled out of bed is a success. Our definitions of success in this country, especially Western civilization, is we need the big house. We need or at least the nice house. We need the beautiful car. We need fancy clothes in order to fit in. And is that a true measure of success? I mean, having a nice car is great. I mean, we need to get around with reliable transportation. But is it a success to measure who we are by what we drive? We identify with it, especially young boys with, uh, and I did the same thing. Yeah, here in the South, we like to have trucks, so everybody has a truck, and everybody jacks it up. They jack it up, and they make it all fancy and uh, do stuff to it, which is no nothing wrong with that, until but we find that that truck is all of a sudden an extension of who we are, and it's an expression for certain of who we are, and we attach our egos to that as a level of success especially when you pull up to a red light and you look down and you see somebody else in a jalopy. You think, oh, well, I'm better than you. I'm more successful than you. I'm getting my life on the right track. And is that success? Some people would say yes. I would argue that it is not. I, like I have a, a very real nervous sort of anxiety that... Our sanctuary, uh, with all of our permaculture and our animals and, uh, and our Sunday gatherings, it may not grow. It just may end up being, you know, sometimes me, you, and somebody else here on Sunday, sometimes five or six, sometimes 10, 15. And to me, I, I've thought, is that a success having, you know, 30 or 40 people with really... Um, working diligently and striving to better ourselves. Uh, if I can't do that, am I a failure? Is that, am I not able to help and reach and touch people? Uh, because I need help too. And there are a lot of people out there. No. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that uh, we have many friends that uh, periodically come on our Sundays and they're a big value and help to my personal growth. But having a fear can make us all of a sudden funnel that down into, wow, am I, am I a success or am I a failure? And because I have a nice truck that I doctored up at, you know, 50 years old, I got the front guard on it with a winch and because uh, I got to have a winch. We live on a farm. We're pulling stuff out of the mud all the, the time. Ditches. <laughs> yeah. So, but I don't, like in my youth, I don't associate that truck with an actual extension of me. Now I view it as a tool. So uh, at one time in my life, I would say, "Yo, oh, yeah, I'm pretty successful. I have this nice truck and I have, you know, whatever. <laughs> like this is, that's not a measure of success. I think what we should be focused on is going immediately into ourselves and go, man, I really... Uh, I really could communicate better. I really could love better. I could express myself more if I wasn't so fearful. So if, I, if I'm able to overcome that fear, then that is a measure of success. If I'm able to control uh, my urges to be a smart ass, uh, if I, and that's a tough one for me, <laughs> Uh, if I can, if I can curb uh, my want to do something really stupid, like eat extra pizza last night, that would be a success. If I'm able to teach and learn to myself, inside of myself, that focus when I find my mind wandering off when I'm in the middle of work doing something, that I need to be, my attention needs to be focused on this thing. Instead, my mind will start to wander 
And then I go, oh, I do need to look this thing up. And then I'll forget. And I'll put that off for a little while while I let my mind take me somewhere else. And then I got to go, come on, hurry up back here. Let's get back to this. I think I would be successful when I can learn to rein my mind in. And, and we have been propagandized in this country to think, no, you just shut up, put your uh, head to the, your nose to the grindstone, and you just keep on going. You go be this doctor, lawyer, nurse, specialist, whatever it is, uh, and you get up every morning and you go do your thing and you come home and spend your hour and a half, two hours with your kids and you wake up in the morning and do it all over again then you have all your other chores that you need to do in your personal life on your weekends and then your life is over like is is that the measure of success because that is the, how we have basically defined it in this country i think we have gotten things totally ass backwards in this country we do need to work we do need to put our nose to the grindstone we do need to be goal oriented and achieve but we've taken it out of the out of the pie, if you, if you look at that proverbial pizza, you know, the biggest slice is just put your nose to the grindstone. Just just go. Just go get after it. And so you can have an, a nicer house, nicer than uh, your neighbors. You can drive newer, fancier cars than your neighbors. That is the biggest slice of pizza there. It's, it's not how deep and meaningful are your relationships? Most people don't look at a super close, happy, or you know, very contented family and go, wow, they're really successful because they're driving an old Toyota or if they're driving something really fancy. Like nobody looks, they don't go beyond the fancy and they don't go beyond that when everybody places judgment on everybody everywhere you go. I think for our society to to even start to do better, we're, we're just divided everywhere. Everybody gets pissed off. Everybody is flipping everybody off and the road rage and everybody's irritated, fighting over TVs during the Christmas season at Walmart. Uh, you know, oh, I'm successful. I got this TV right before you did. For $50 cheaper. Woo. Yeah, yay. You know, th that's not success. You know, I mean, those people really think because they went and bought a, a big TV and they're going to, that's going to make their life better when they have their friends or family over and they go, my, I got this big TV. You know, that's what they're thinking. Uh, yeah, we got things way wrong. This, this whole idea of, of our lives being focused around consumerism and which attempts to fulfill that primal urge of us going from hunter gatherers. We need to hunt. We need to gather. We've got to collect. So I, I got to go shopping. I got to go to Amazon and buy crap. I don't need, I got to go to Walmart and I got to go do this and to, to f try to uh, stimulate and fulfill that primal urge. And we call that success. Man, I think not. I think you, I, you just look at some of these, um, these cultures that were here before we came and invaded. Uh, you know, much of what we've been taught about the Native Americans is completely wrong. Some of it is true. But man, they, they were in large part mostly very peaceful in tune with mother nature and the universe. They didn't look at their neighbor sleeping in the teepee next to them and go, oh, his loincloth is better than mine. I gotta go work harder. <laughs> that, that is not what happened. Yeah. I think we need to step back from ourselves and go, you know, how, how can I in my allotted time with my wife or anybody else that you care to have and maintain a relationship with to say, how can I make that better? And not better as in, hey, let's go to Disneyland or hey, let's go stand in the three hour line to ride this ride. I'm not talking about that kind of close. Like, that's not being close. Like meaningful conversations. Sort of teach ourselves how, how, to, how to bring out 
information out of the other so you can dig deep into the roots of who each of us are. We've been getting really good about doing that, like, on my Sunday when I come home. Yeah. Have a bottle of wine and... Because it loosens just, up your lips. <laughs> just, which I don't have, so that's success today is I'm not drinking wine. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I'm fasting today to, for three days. I'm doing a three-day fast, <laughs> so no wine. So, oh, it's just... I didn't miss it until you just said it. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. It's okay. We're going to be successful today. Yes. No it's... wine. Oh, oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have wine in three days. That's going to be glorious. I think that if we can reevaluate ourselves, and I think that is another thing why journals are so important, if you actually use them and go, you know, hey, this happened today. Why did I felt this certain way? Why did I feel that way? Am I being unsuccessful in my relationship because some of these triggers and emotions are stem from past experiences? Am I bringing things to the table that don't belong on this table? That was another table. I've already moved out of that. How many tables do you have in there? Probably a lot. <laughs> I got a lot of people in here <laughs> and they need to sit down. <laughs> yeah, and we all do. And most people don't recognize uh, the different urges and personalities within us because uh, we just chalk everything off as being moody. Oh, I'm in a bad mood today. Um, but you know, what, what's causing that bad mood? If we are able to teach ourselves and be an observer of ourselves, and just say, Hey, uh, all right, I recognize this. I recognize I'm being moody today. Why am I being moody? What's causing me to do that? Is it some something I ate? Something somebody said and it triggered me the wrong way? Am I thinking I'm going to have loss in some area? Well, that's not being successful. That, that's being uh, a failure to yourself. And, and it's unsuccessful to dwell on and think about the, the negative parts of our life. It, it's like uh, that podcast uh, we watched with, um, oh, what's the name of that book? The Art of Not Giving a Fuck? Or it was. Oh, or, gosh. What is his name? The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck is the name of the book. Yeah, he, he, was, he was great. <laughs> he was talking about whenever you uh, recognize, oh, I'm not going to be negative today. Well, now you're giving credence to the negativity. Yeah. And just instead of going, I'm just this way. I'm not that way. I'm this way. Uh, I'm going to be. When you, I'm going to be. Well, that's an unsuccessful sort of way to go about it because now you are giving those those levels, uh, those moods, those aspects of our personality we want to change. You're, you're give, giving them more credibility and more thought. I think success equates to that if I get this, it's going to make me happy. If I get this big house, it makes me successful, but it's also going to make me happy uh, for a little bit. <laughs> and then you got to go get the new car. If I get this new car, it's going to make me happy. So I think success equates to things, the happy thing. Like this will fulfill that void for a little bit. Well, that's why some people may, we all like to shop because uh, just for a minute, it makes us feel great. <laughs> Oh, duh. You know, you release, you release all these chemicals in your brain and it makes you go, oh, oh, look, I got these new pair of shoes. You know, they're, you know, new pairs of shoes are great. But to be like really happy about it is kind of silly. It's almost really even anti-childlike. I don't think, <laughs> I just don't think anything is that, that is, is no, nothing is really a big deal. Like you need a good car, as my grandpa Schmidt said, uh, I just wanted to run really well hmm. and to get me from A to B. And he always got, he'd keep his car about every three or four years and he always got another one every couple of years. But he was not a wealthy man. He just said it was a priority for him because he did not want, and he specifically said to me, I do not want my wife to be broken down on the side of the road with me because she didn't drive. She never drove <laughs> ever. She never learned how to drive. So he said, I don't want to take her anywhere in this car break down. So that's why I'm always going to buy one, a new one every three or four years. Well, I've been guilty of that too. 
but I was raised around it because my dad trades cars all the time. But I always, every three or four years, I was in a new car. But that's a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. And it was always kept clean. So now that I'm driving down this dirt road, I'm <laughs> like, fuck it. <laughs> it does me no good to give it a bath. But I feel a sense of success that that car is paid for. Yeah. And then Colin sent me that message yesterday. Super proud of himself that he paid off his vehicle, 25 years old. And that's successful. That is To pay successful. that off and not not have the mentality that, oh, that's paid for. I'm going to go get a new one. Let me trade this one in and start a new cycle of payments. And yeah, well, to, to circle back, uh, Saki <laughs> Saki back style. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to go back is a, it, it is successful to, to get a, a vehicle that runs well. And like you're being thoughtful, like you, if you're able to, if you're able to, it is a good practice to have something that can you maintain that vehicle for 10 years that it runs fine? Yeah, probably. I mean, I've done, with, I've done yeah. it with quite a few farm work trucks out here. And I've got one that's almost 10 years old out there. It runs fine. We just do routine maintenance to it. Uh, I think that's a measure of success, taking care of what you have. To know that, yeah, you know, I'm gonna invest my energy into producing this currency that is going to flow to purchase things that I need in my life. So I want to make sure I get the best quality I can afford, and then I can take and maintain that and take care of it, and in, in turn also use those tools to take care of me. I'm able to take care of me and then the people around me with what I physically have accumulated. And that is a measure of success, not destroying what you have earned in most cases. I think, but most importantly, the success is inner peace, inner contentment. You know, Jefferson had it right. It is the pursuit of happiness. And happiness doesn't mean always being ecstatic and jumping up and down. Mm -hmm. Yay, I'm so happy. You know, everybody has to take these photos. Uh, I, I've seen this countless times. I'm sure you all have too, where people, will, they look so bored. Uh, somebody's filming them or taking pictures and you see them right before and they're all sitting around looking bored and they take a picture to show off how happy they are. Yeah, it, posting on Facebook, it, like I think they try to make it look like their life is like crazy exciting they're crazy happy they always want to document their life on Facebook or some for other one. people to see to get those likes to get the the, the, the attention that they the so endorphins great. that they get from and, and all so the likes. And so with that it is also goes into what is success do I by getting the attention of others, and more often than not on social media, it's nobody that you really know. You don't have a, a deep-rooted relationship with. Yeah, it's, most of them are acquaintances. Yeah. And acquaintances. I've been guilty of posting stuff myself, but... Yeah, I've been uh, responsible for posting mostly uh, thought-provoking, serious stuff. Now, occasionally I have, like I was really proud of uh, uh, some... Somebody was in the dojo with us doing some training years ago and, you know, filmed me doing something cool. And I was proud of that. So I posted a couple of those. I was like, okay, right, that was fun. I'm glad somebody, <laughs> I'm glad somebody uh, was in the dojo with us. And well, my, ki that. my kids are at success. So I feel proud, like showing them off to the world. But um, mo most of the people that I'm friends with, they're just acquaintances. Yeah, there's, there's, there, no, there's no deep rooted friendship there so imagine see being a true governor and manager of your time is a success because if you have a lot of money or no money totally irrelevant what you do have is an unknown amount of time so if we're managing our time properly we can just sit and talk with the people that we love we can't just sit in the sun. We can't play a game. We can play pickleball. We can just interact, throw a football instead of this and, and, and talk. Yeah. Mm. To me, that is a measure of success by bringing 
ourselves back into humanity, back into having the levels of of comfort and trust and relationships, and and being able to talk. Like you know, if there's something. Uh, bumps in the road like there are with every relationship from mothers to sons, spouses, siblings, friends. There's always these things that come up. And and it is successful to me if, if both parties are genuinely go, okay, this was really something bad. This was a bad action you did or this was you hurt my feelings doing this. And, and if you can honestly come together and just have a, a talk over a day, two days, however long it takes to figure it out and smooth that over for that relationship because that relationship is valuable to both people. If, if that was a propagandized thing in, in, in this country, that would be success. People would get along a lot better if we were pushed toward what we are and what we are supposed to be instead of being driven away from it. And success is, of course, the things that we, we think of, but that is just a tiny, tiny piece of it. Like, yeah, we, we, need to, we need to work toward our goals. We need to mark levels of achievement. We need to do that. Because we have, we we need to live. We've got to have uh, an additional purpose in our life. Those are all successes. But the most important thing in life, we're never going to be laying on our deathbed and going, "God, man, I sure am glad I got those new shoes." <laughs> yeah, man, I sure am glad I was able to get that new car last week. But you know, damn it, I just got in a car wreck and somebody just smashed me, and now I'm fixing to die. Yeah, you're just not going to be thinking about any of that. You're not going to be thinking. The only thing that's going to be important to you are the people that you love. And the time you spent with them and the memories you make. and That is successful. That is what we should be more focused on. Because if we have deeper roots and stronger community and... and, and people really wanting to understand and know... Uh, why do you think this way? Why are your belief systems this way? And then, and then come to really boil out and, and, and filter out uh, what is true with each other. Like everybody was searching for truth without holding any negative type judgments. Like, oh, you're an idiot. Yeah, like there's this uh, financial channel that I uh, like, the uh, no, YouTube channel that I enjoy. But this guy's just, a, a he's damn near on the verge of a communist which drives me out of my mind. So I'd love to sit down and talk to him about that. But he's brilliant in these other things that he's, he talks about in the financial world. Like, totally brilliant. Which doesn't match with my understanding. And so I'm like, okay, or in my judgment, which I don't think is successful because I judge too much, I'm trying to use an assessment, trying to assess the situation, assess the person without placing a positive or negative judgment on them. That is much easier said than done, but one day I'm going to be successful at this. <laughs> because uh, if, we were, if we were just taught from the day we were born, Let's communicate. Oh, I learned this new thing. What does that new thing mean to you? Why do you really like to do this one thing and occupy all your time in this one thing and not uh, explore the other avenues that are available yes. to you in life? Uh, you know, all of these, all of these important <clears throat> things, we, we drive ourselves to some unsuccessful habits. And then we get, get accustomed and used to living in those habits. And we need to learn how to break and throw away, let it go, those bad ones. So the point is, success is really loving and communicating with the people that you have in your circle for all of us. Because then that fosters a deeper and meaningful community. It fosters uh, many more people not flipping off uh, somebody in traffic. It is much better for all of us. And we have a 
Well, you can watch this other video, uh, What is Happiness? Yeah, this, it's a great way and great segue into what we're even talking about now. I think I'm happy and successful to have you sitting with me. <laughs> and I am thankful for that. And I'm thankful for y'all that joined us. So also you can uh, help lift the uh, numbers on Rumble and BitChute, DTube, all the other alternatives. We are also there. And more importantly, if you are here in this area, come see us at 1.30 every Sunday.